Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. So today we'll be talking about area of quadrilaterals, okay? So we'll be talking about parallelograms, trapezium, rectangle, square, and all other quadrilaterals. So first, what is a quadrilateral, right? A quadrilateral is a closed figure made up of four straight lines, okay? And it's not necessary that these lines need to be parallel or equal or that sort of thing, okay? They just need to be made up of four straight lines and it needs to be a closed figure, okay? So we have a quadrilateral. Now, what is the formula to find the area of this quadrilateral? So the formula of area of this quadrilateral involves the diagonal, okay? We need a diagonal. And then we need two perpendicular lines uh, from these opposite vertex of this quadrilateral, okay? So one from there and one from here. So we have two perpendicular lines and a diagonal. Now we could name these diagonal and these perpendiculars with any letters that we want. But for now, I'm going to assume that this diagonal is our D, okay? So it's from here up to there. And uh, let's assume that these perpendicular lines are A and then B. So if the diagonal is D and the perpendicular lines are A and B, then the formula to find the area of this quadrilateral is 1 divided by 2 times D times A plus B. Okay? So sometimes it might also be written as 1 by 2. So they can write this A plus B in front as well. So it's the same thing, okay? So it can be written as 1 by 2, A plus B times D. So it's the same thing, okay? So this is a formula to find the area of quadrilateral. So for example, if in the question, let's say this diagonal is 8 centimeter, and let's say this A is 4 centimeter, and then this B is 6 centimeter, okay? So this is our diagonal, this is our perpendicular lines, then to find the area, we don't need to do anything, right? We just put in those values times our D is 8. So 8 times our A plus B is 4 plus 6. So we can cut this 2 and this 8, right? 2 times 4 is 8. And we get 4 times 4 plus 6 is 10 is equal to 40 centimeters square. So in this way, we can use this formula to find the area of a normal quadrilateral. Now, what if the two sides of our quadrilateral is parallel to each other, okay? So we have two sides of the quadrilateral parallel to each other, and then it's not necessary that these two sides also need to be parallel, okay? So we have two sides parallel, and these two sides are not parallel. Then in that case, we call this quadrilateral a trapezium, okay? So it has its own special name. Now, how do we find the area of a trapezium? To find the area of the trapezium, we need the height of the trapezium, okay? So the height of the trapezium is going to be from this parallel line to this parallel line, and it should be 90 degrees. So usually, when people make the height, they make it from here, right, from one of the endpoints of this upper side, and make 90 degrees. So this is our height. But you can also make that height anywhere in between these parallel lines. It just needs to be 90 degrees, okay? So this can also be the height of our trapezium. But for now, we are going to assume this as our height, okay? So this is our height. And let's say this side of our trapezium, right? The bottom side is A. And let's say this upper side of our trapezium is B. So if we have the length of these two parallel sides of the trapezium and the height of the trapezium, then the formula to find the area of this trapezium is again 1 by 2 times A plus B times height. So again, for example, if this height was, let's say, 10 centimeter, and let's say this B is 4 centimeter, and this A is, let's say, 6 centimeter, okay, these sides are given in your question, then to find the area of this trapezium, you just put in this formula, right, and then put in these values, so 1 by 2 times a plus B is going to be again 4 plus 6 times our height is 10. So we can again cut this 2 and then this 10, right? 2 times 5 is 10. And you are going to get 4 plus 6 is 10. So 10 times 5, which is equal to 
50 centimeter square. So in this way, we can find the area of a trapezium. So that's our second quadrilateral. Now, what if both sides of our quadrilateral is parallel to each other? In that case, we get a parallelogram, right? So we have our parallelogram here. To find the area of parallelogram, again, we need the base of the parallelogram. Okay, so we have a B, let's say, as our base. And again, we need the height of the parallelogram, okay? Again, the height should be touching these two parallel lines and it should be 90 degrees. It's not necessary that you make the height from here. Again, you can make the height from here, from anywhere you want. It just needs to touch these two parallel lines and it just needs to be 90 degrees, okay? So let's consider this height as H. Then the formula to find the area of a parallelogram is there is no one by two, okay? It's just base into height. That's it base multiplied by height. Now again, let's look at an example. So what if our base is 10 and our height is, let's say, 5, then our area is going to be, it's just base into height, so 10 times 5, which is going to be 50 centimeters square. So it's pretty easy, okay, in case of parallelogram. You just need to multiply this base and height and you get your area. So that's our parallelogram. Now again, what if we have a parallelogram, but the angles of our parallelogram is 90 degrees? Then in that case, we get a rectangle, right? So we have a rectangle here. In rectangle, our opposite sides are equal, right? And our angle is 90 degrees. And we usually denote this side as length and this side as breadth. And most of us usually know the formula of area of rectangle, which is L into B. But still, let's look at an example. So if the length is, let's say, 8 centimeter, and the breadth is, let's say, 4 centimeter, then the area is going to be L into B. So it's going to be 8 into 4, which is going to be 32 centimeter square. And that's it. That's our rectangle, right? Now, what if it's not just the opposite sides, right? What if all the sides of the rectangle are equal? Then in that case, we get a square, right? So we have our square, and we usually represent these sides of square as L, and the formula to find the area of square is L square. So if this side is, let's say, 6 centimeter, then our area is going to be L square, 6 square, which is equal to 36 centimeter square. Now this is pretty simple, right? But there is an extra formula for finding the area of square, okay? And that formula is when the diagonal of the square is given in the question, right? Let's say this is the diagonal. Then the formula to find the area of our square is d square divided by 2. Okay? So this is actually derived from the Pythagoras theorem. Actually, all these formulas can be derived, right? So if you want to learn how we can derive them, then let us know in the comments, okay? So if the diagonal of the square is given, then we usually use this formula, okay? Not this one, the L square one. We use the d square by 2. So for example, if this diagonal was, let's say, 4 centimeter, then our area is going to be 4 square divided by 2, which is going to be 16 divided by 2, right? And it's going to be 8 centimeter square. So in this way, we have two formulas to find the area of a square. Now, what if the four sides are equal, but the angles are not 90 degrees, okay? So these angles are not 90 degrees, but their four sides are equal. Then we call this short of quadrilateral rhombus. To find the area of a rhombus, again, we need diagonals, okay? So we have one diagonal and we have another diagonal. So let's say this diagonal is D1, and let's say this horizontal diagonal is D2. Then the formula to find the area of rhombus is 1 by 2 times D1 times D2. So again, let's look at an example, right? So let's say this diagonal is 4 centimeter, and let's say this horizontal diagonal is 6 centimeter, then we can just put in those values in this formula, right? 1 by 2 times 4 times 6. It's going to be 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, and 4 times 3 is 12 centimeter 
square. So in this way, if you have the diagonals of a rhombus, then we can pretty much easily find the area. Now we have our last quadrilateral, which is the kite, okay? So in case of kite, the adjacent sides are equal, okay? It's not all four sides are equal. It's just that these adjacent sides, they are equal to each other, okay? In that case, how do we find the area of a kite? So again, we need the diagonals, okay? So let's say we have our first diagonal like this and our second diagonal like this. And again, let's say this diagonal is D1 and this horizontal diagonal is D2. Then the formula to find the area of a kite is again, one by two times D1 times D2, okay? It's the same as with the rhombus. So again, if let's say this diagonal right here is 10 centimeter and let's say this diagonal right here is 8 centimeter then our area is again going to be 1 by 2 times 10 times 8 so again we can cut this 2 and this 8 right 2 times 4 is 8 and we get 10 times 4 is 40 centimeter square so in this way we can find the area of a kite so these are the formula to find the area of all these type of quadrilaterals. So what do you think? If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for future maths videos. Thank you.